That's right, Walker. Polling sites all across Onondaga County, just like this one here at Huntington Hall, are reminding voters to turn over their ballot and vote yes or no to five proposed New York State constitutional amendments. The Pumpkin Hollow Farm has been in the Cox family since 1998, but this year's harvest season has proven to be unlike any other they faced before. Panic is the only word Louise Cox could muster to describe what the family has been through this year. In just 14 days, Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul will ascend to the role of Governor of New York State. And as you can see, it took almost a full year here before Syracuse University's COVID costs would be covered. But now everything the university has done to protect students from the coronavirus is finally paying off. This year, Wood gets to play Clara once again and put all of her hours of hard work here on display right here at Krauss Heinz Theater this weekend. So what does this mean for people like you and me who aren't exactly in the cockpit of this operation? Well, the SYR airport could be bringing Central New Yorkers lower airfare and new airlines to send passengers to new destinations. And even in non-pandemic times, the Center for International Services is here to help international students adapt to life in the U.S. I'm Louise Rath. Reporting in Syracuse, Louise Rath. And I'm Louise Rath. Have a great night, Syracuse, and enjoy that snow. That's right, Ryan. Earlier today, I spoke with the president of Student Association, David Bruin, and he tells me they're working with the university's office of the provost to develop a long term solution for better student mental health. Now, just before Thanksgiving break, Student Association passed a Wellness Day bill calling for this kind of collaboration. Bruin tells me this bill passed unanimously, reinforcing student interest and adding Wellness Days back into university semester calendars. Now, last spring, a student led petition with over 2400 signatures encouraged the university to give students a few days off. And SU chose to support the well-being of their campus community by adding three wellness days to the spring 2021 semester. This decision was partly made to offer some relief as students wouldn't have their usual spring break due to COVID-19 concerns. And now that we're operating under a normal semester schedule, Bruin hopes wellness days can support student mental health in the semesters to come that a lot of students really appreciated the wellness days and enjoyed those. And we really feel as students and as representatives of students that more wellness days going forward are gonna be necessary. Now this collaboration between Student Association and the Office of the Provost is meant to provide a long-term solution, which means we might not see wellness days as early as next semester. Earlier today, I also spoke with SU student Spencer Pierce, who developed the petition for wellness days last winter. In a statement earlier today, he told me he does not think he would start another petition because he'd like to see the university take action and implement wellness days themselves. Now, I do have to say that Spencer is a member of our sports department, but luckily for students like Spencer, a welcome change could soon be coming to the SU Hill. Reporting in Syracuse, Louise Rath, Citrus TV News. Guys. After months of planning, a new initiative at the Syracuse Hancock International Airport is ready for takeoff. But uh, if, it's, if it works, I would say that it's good. The SYR Airport is set to welcome a new aircraft rescue and firefighting team this summer. They train for uh, aircraft emergencies, uh, different aircraft types, but they also do provide EMS and first responder service across the airport. The City of Syracuse Fire Department has provided these airport fire services since the early 2000s. But when the 174th National Guard decided to create its own fire department, Jason Terreri knew it was time for a change. It just makes sense that they provide the primary out here um, because why, why have a duplication of resources? The National Guard attack wing is stationed at the Hancock Field Air National Guard base, which is just a few wingspans away from the Syracuse airport. We pay the city of Syracuse between three and a half and four million dollars a year for fire service. That cost will go away um, with the guard providing it because they're already out here. So what does this mean for people like you and me who aren't exactly in the cockpit of this operation? Well, the SYR airport could be bringing Central New Yorkers lower airfare and new airlines to send passengers to new destinations.
So what that will actually do is reduce the cost of operations for the airlines here at the airport. Ultimately, that can help uh, roll into lower airfares at the airport because it's, it's cheaper for the airlines to do business here. Some SYR passengers say their nearest airport is too small, so they choose to fly out of Syracuse. Even then, any passenger was excited to hear what the airport is doing to bring them lower airfares. Be, uh, it would be positive for the city of Syracuse. And again, if you get more airlines in here, more competition, hopefully that would uh, end up with better prices, right? Even out-of-state travelers, like Todd Merrill, echoed the same hope for these positive changes in the terminal. I mean, more airlines means more runways, which means more noise, so there's going to be a lot of uh, interest by the local community. And as the airport looks towards smoother skies, Central New York passengers can look forward to the final descent of these efforts to safely get them to their final destination. Louise Rath, NCC News. Snowfall absorbs sound, making wintry days in central New York that much quieter, but not at Ellie's Acres Farm. This was something I always wanted to do. Retired Army Colonel John Lamondes served for 27 years, including duty in the Gulf War and Afghanistan. But eight years ago, he knew it was time to bring his family home to central New York. You know, and you never know, every day every day is different. Um, my life's a lot safer now and I'm, I'm very thankful for that. But with this newfound comfort, the family found more silence than Snowfall could ever create. Here we are 14 miles from Syracuse and we're in, you know, 1990s era technology. If they were going to keep their children up to speed in the classroom and successfully start their business, they desperately needed internet access. My daughter would come home and say, Mom, I need to do this research online. I'm like, OK, well, you have a half an hour because we don't have enough minutes. But they're not alone. Uh, excuse me. There are hundreds of thousands of households in New York State and millions more in America that are quite literally disconnected. This is a neighbor's property right here. Data from the U.S. Census and the FCC says virtually all New Yorkers have the framework for broadband but even though it's available to everyone, almost one in seven New Yorkers who could have broadband don't. But yet, the Lamondis family wasn't always part of this statistic. So I knew something was up, and they said, you've been approved for your street, and it's not going to cost you anything. <laughs> and on cold, snowy days, just like this one here in central New York, the access to Internet is that much more important. Kids could have homework to do, they could have their classes moved online, and there are still many communities across America that don't have this bandwidth to send their kids to school when school is closed. If we hadn't had internet access with COVID, my kids would not have been able to do remote school. If COVID taught state lawmakers one thing, it was that we all needed access to broadband internet. You'd be hard pressed to find anybody, either in the assembly, the legislature, uh, U.S. Congress, U.S. Senate, I think that doesn't understand the importance and the magnitude of this. Nobody's in labor. Yes. In 2021, John was sworn in as a member of the New York State Assembly. Now he's bringing his experience with rural broadband to this year's state agenda. Just last month, Governor Hochul announced a $1 billion Connect All initiative to bring broadband to all New Yorkers. And so I think that uh, a lot of bills have come through. It's a topic of discussion um, every week and every month. And uh, we are trying to do everything we can. All the little ones have a heat lamp. Everything he can to ensure no one else finds the same silence he found eight years ago in his humble Lafayette home. Louise Rath, NCC News. <laughs> Five, six, seven, and eight, and. The studios at the Syracuse City Ballet are filled with sounds of Christmas time and dancers working on this holiday classic. I actually do tune off a little bit and just take, let the music take over. Rainu Wood has been dancing since she was three years old. My 
Mom just kind of put me in ballet because she thought that it would be cute to see me in a tutu. 17 years later, she's turned her love for dance into a career. Here I am at 20 years old, a company artist with Syracuse City Ballet. She knew she wanted to dance professionally when she first played Clara in a production of The Nutcracker. I remember having this feeling on stage of, this is exactly what I want to be doing. This year, Wood gets to play Clara once again and put all of her hours of hard work here, on display, right here at Krauss Heinz Theater this weekend. And so just being able to hear the music again and go through different characters is so fun. But this year, the Syracuse City Ballet's Nutcracker story will be slightly different from the one she grew up with. I think the Nutcracker is a piece that allows you to be more creative and you can go in very different ways to approach uh, the story. Aldo Caton Santiago is re-choreographing some traditional Nutcracker dances that portray dancers from around the world in a seemingly unfair light. All of these dances from around the world, I'm still using the music, but I made all of them royalty. Santiago is in his first year as the company's artistic director, and he prides himself on training a diverse group of professionals. I have dancers from Mexico, from Korea, from the States, of course. Um, the ballet master is from Puerto Rico. Uh, so, yeah, I'm really happy. And while some dances are being changed for the better, the industry's love for this holiday classic will never fade. Louise Rath, NCC News.